everyone, this is Ross, and this video is for the serious fig collector. Uh, this video is going to help you identify common varieties of figs. And if you're in the United States and you're collecting fig varieties, there's a good chance that you have a lot of figs that are very similar to each other that go by different names. And there's so many names out there that it's get, it gets very confusing, and especially for somebody who's new, somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing. Um, you could buy a whole lot of varieties, start a whole lot of cuttings, only to find out two to three years into collecting figs that a lot of the varieties you grow are very similar to each other and you you have essentially duplicates of the same fig, whereas most people in that situation are trying to get a wide variety of figs to try as many different types of figs that they can, but they end up really with the same ones because a lot of people recommend a lot of people highly recommend certain figs and a lot of them are more common in the United States as well. The figs that I think are the most common in the United States that you find the most frequently are the ones listed here in this little post here that I put up on rfigs.com. If you're not a part of rfigs and you're listening to this video, I suggest you join rfigs uh, because you are going to save yourself a lot of money and time um, joining that forum. You know, there's a lot of people out there like me that are also growing a lot of figs and have a really good sense of what I'm saying to you in this video. Um, now, the problem with recognizing certain varieties is that it's very, it's sort of, it's actually pretty, it's really difficult, I would say. Um, I kind of make the comparison here as you can read here to a dentist being able to recognize cavities, right? The, the dentist comes in, gives you the x-ray and says, oh, you have cavities, Ross. And then I'm like, what? I don't see the cavities. I don't believe you. They show you the x-ray. And on the x-ray, they point them all out to you and you say, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see anything. Well, that's because the dentist has a trained eye. They know what a cavity looks like. You have no idea. So if you really have no idea what to look for, how can you actually how can you actually accurately make a good guess as to whether or not you have cavities? You know what I mean? They've looked through thousands and thousands of x-rays to eventually gain that eye for this kind of thing. It's the same thing with figs, guys. You have to look at so many photos. You have to be in this almost obsessed with this hobby to really be able to recognize these things by eye. I've gotten pretty good to the point where I can recognize certain figs from like, you know, 20 feet away. You know, I don't really need to be that close because I can see the leaf pattern on certain common varieties that I know and I can have a really good guess as to what that fig is. And then I won't even bother trying to go after it, you know what I mean? Because if it's just a regular old Celeste, well, I don't need that, right? You know, there's other figs out there like, let's say, Brunswick or Long de Doot or Dalmaty. Those are pretty common and they all have a very similar leaf pattern. So I know that if I see that leaf pattern, I know it's either one of those three figs. When I see a hardy Chicago type leaf, I know that it's going to be a hardy Chicago. You get an eye for this kind of thing. And the other problem that I, I um, think that makes this so difficult is that there's really a lot to look for and a lot to recognize. I would, um, I'm gonna go over a bunch of figs here that I think are very common. I wanna show you pictures of them. I wanna show you a picture of the fig itself and the leaf, if I can find a picture, a good picture of the leaf. Um, I personally think it's more important to have a picture of the fruit than it is the leaf. But you need both of them to really make an accurate um, an accurate guess as to what the variety is. I have certainly been able to identify a fig variety by just the fig, and I've certainly been able to identify the fig variety by just the leaf. So you can get really good at this, and you can really recognize certain things. Um, and I think if you get these particular varieties here 
down pat, whether you know what they look like, what the fig looks like for all of these, or what the leaf looks like for all of these, I think you'll be really better off than if you didn't. I think this is something that a lot of uh, collectors or new collectors need to know. And this is just a stepping stone of knowledge that is just very important. It's, it's almost as important as learning how to propagate, right? Learning how to root cuttings, learning how to do air layers, learning how to graft. I think this is equally as important as that because this really will just save you a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, and if you want to be serious about this and you want to have different varieties, not just the same variety by different names, this is really important. And we're going to expand a little bit on what I just said a little bit more because they're not exactly the same fig. We'll get to that. Um, but the other reason why this becomes so difficult is that you need to know a lot of, like I said, you, you need to know a lot of different parts of this, right? There's a lot of different pieces to form a fig, right? You have, if you're looking at a fig, right? Uh, let's look at a picture of a fig here. Let's start out with, with um, I guess, Hardy Chicago. This is the first fig we're going to look at. You need to know that what the, the color of the skin is. You need to know what the shape of the neck is, the shape of the fig, the size of the fig, the interior color of the fig, the interior pattern of the fig, the eye of the fig, if the eye is open, closed, medium, the color of the eye of the fig. You also need to know the stem of the fig. Some figs have very large stems, others have very short stems. Some figs have almost no neck. Some figs are flat, some figs are shaped like teardrops, some figs are you know, completely round. Um, there's so many factors to consider here. Um, another thing you should consider here, um, cracking, cracks in the skin, tears in the skin, where that exactly happens and the pattern in which that happens. Is it a vertical crack? Is it a horizontal crack? Are there many cracks? Um, is there more than one color to the skin? Um, not only what, okay, so just take everything I just listed and now multiply that by like five because now you need to know not just what it looks like everything I just said in your climate you need to know what it looks like in everybody's climate you need to know what it looks like in the Pacific Northwest you need to look like, know what it looks like when it's grown in a hot and humid dry climate you need to know what it looks like when it's caprified versus uncaprified you need to know what it looks like when it's waterlogged I mean, it's just, it is like, it's endless in actuality. It is. If you don't, it's not just enough to look at one picture of a fig, compare that to somebody else growing it in somewhere else and say, oh, that's the same fig because it matches what you have. Well, that's not true because them growing in a different climate, it's going to look slightly different and you're going to be thrown off and you're going to say, oh my God, this is crazy. I'm lost. I don't understand this at all. So there's a lot of uh, local conditions that really play a part in this. Another thing you need, really should know when, when you're trying to identify a variety is, does it produce a Brava? Is it a San Pedro type? Does it produce a main crop without pollination or with pollination? You know, around what time does it ripen? Um, you know, any characteristic of that variety could be used to help identify a particular variety. You also need to know what the fig looks like in various stages of ripeness. And this is where we get even more complicated. You know, a fig could look totally different five days later after it's ripe. You know what I mean? Or three days before it's actually ripe. The skin color changes dramatically. You need to know what the skin is going to look like on day one all the way to day 10 or how, whatever day it is that you're picking that fig. The skin changes dramatically. Sometimes figs have multiple colors to the skin. They don't have just one color. Sometimes the neck doesn't get the color that the, the body of the fig gets. Sometimes the bottom of the fig gets sugar spots or really interesting weird dark black colors to it. You know, some figs have speckles on the on the skin itself, have white speckles. 
Some figs have different color petioles, which are the um, the growth point of the fig. When they shed that growth point and leave this residue, those are called petioles. Sometimes they're green, sometimes they're tan, sometimes they're red. And then, of course, you also need to know the, the shape of the leaf, the color of the stem of the leaf, the color of the wood. Sometimes the wood is variegated. Sometimes the wood has different markings on it. Sometimes the wood is hairy. Sometimes the skin is hairy. Um, you know, I don't mean to make this a bit daunting, but you can certainly learn this um, and pick this up, but it's not easy is what I'm trying to say. And the only way you're going to know how to do this is if you look at thousands of photos of figs. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to say that, but it really is the truth. You have to put in the amount of time to gain this knowledge. It's not something that's just going to come to you just by watching this video. So let's start out with uh, Hardy Chicago and we'll get a good idea of what that looks like. I, I only have so much time to show you guys these varieties and I only have so many pictures that we can look at at one time. Um, I'll try to show you guys what I think is the best representation of that variety. Um, Hardy Chicago is one of them figs that's very uh, distinguishable from the leaf. So it's very easy to determine by the leaf. It's got a really fuzzy, rough uh, feel to it. You can also visually see that roughness from afar. You can see it. Um, it doesn't have much of a shine to it. It's kind of a, like a, uh, I guess matte is the word. Um, it also has these five things going on here. I forget what these things here are called. I should know this. I forget what this is called. You know, the, the, the thumbs, however you want to say it. This is, there is a proper name for this, but let's just say these are lobes. And this should be one, two, three, four, five lobes. And that's the standard leaf pattern on a hardy Chicago. What's interesting about it is this little section here it will get these little like sword like appearance and it'll kind of be like jagged here little writ like large ridges I guess in the pattern of the leaf I'm sorry I'm really horrible at describing leaf patterns but you know once you gain that terminology I'm sure I could do it but this little section here is really what makes the difference if this were kind of straight and just really flat like some leaf patterns we'll see. Like see this one's just kind of straight and really uh, narrow. That's not very characteristic of Hardy Chicago, right? Hardy Chicago's got this real fat section here to this pointy lobe, this middle lobe that um, really gives it that character. And this is really what I look like. If we look at a Celeste type leaf really quickly, Celeste leaves almost look pretty similar. Um, I've seen some Celeste leaves, even like, like a blue Celeste or even a black Celeste, they actually match Hardy Chicago pretty closely. And if you don't have a trained eye, you won't really be able to tell the difference and you'll mistake it for something else, right? But a Celeste I think is pretty similar, but see how it's only mostly these three lobes here some of them are five you can see here is this this one here is a five but notice this little section here this is really what differentiates I think a Celeste leaf between Hardy Chicago leaf there's other differences but see how this is more flat there's no jaggedness to this section here that's kind of really what differentiates it for me that's what I look for you know when I see a leaf pattern like this and I take a real quick glance at it that's the biggest difference I'm looking for but the fig itself this is a pretty good care uh, a pretty good um, representation of the interior of the fig you know I would say the interior is probably the best clue as to identifying the fig itself it should be red it should taste like strawberries um, you know it just has this same pattern that you see very frequently 
in Hardy Chicago types. The skin is black, purple when fully ripe. It's brown when it's underripe. A light brown when it's even further underripe. Um, I mean, this is really textbook Hardy Chicago. Uh, let's move on and we'll go down to Italian Honey. Um, and you know what, guys? Before I get into this, I should also mention that if you go into my spreadsheet, you'll see the fig synonyms tab here. And the spreadsheet's down in, in the description. But these are the names of figs that I have put together that are maybe not synonyms, but are very similar figs. And here's the big difference and a lot of the debate, I think, that happens in the fig community. In my mind, the answer is pretty obvious. And I think a lot of a lot of folks believe this. Um, others, I think, will eventually come around to this realization. I think it's inevitable that you will come around to this realization that I'm about to tell you. Your, real, your, your opinions change as time goes on of growing figs. And I think the more the longer you grow a fig the more you realize that um, there are very slight differences that are that become more obvious to you especially as you get a trained eye but a lot of these people including myself I believed a lot of these figs were the same and I had grouped them up as so because I wanted to let people know that yes there's a lot of names for the same fig but also, yeah, they might be slightly different, but if you were, you know, st really stressed on space, right? You're limited on space. I wouldn't necessarily grow more than one of these because they're so similar. And if you really liked it, you could just make a copy of the fig that you really liked. So if I had Sal's Corleone as an example, and I was decided, you know what, I'm going to get this Nardi Black fig here. Well, because they're so similar, why get the other one? I could just make a copy of Sal's Corleone. You know what I mean? These are not all synonyms, right? A synonym is the, is would be the same exact thing. Genetically, it's the same tree. It would just it just goes by a different name. They have the same DNA. These are not all that th that is not the case here for all of these figs. I think some of them certainly probably are synonyms and have the same dna if we can only test all of these varieties and get genetic testing it's pretty expensive and a lot of people are not willing to go through that headache to figure this out you kind of just have to rely on certain people that have put in the research that have come up with these lists and trust what they have to say you know um so a lot of them could be synonyms they could have the same dna but I think what's more likely, and the more I get into this hobby, and the more I, the longer I grow figs, the more I realize that a lot of these are just adaptations of the same fig, or adaptations of a very similar fig. So let's take Hardy Chicago as an example, because Hardy Chicago is the worst one. It has the most synonyms out of any fig or adaptations of any fig that I've ever come across. It's a very popular fig in the United States because a lot of immigrants, when they immigrated to the United States, had brought this fig over from Europe, all throughout Europe, and even parts in the Middle East. Um, this fig is found all throughout the world. And I think certain figs, for their great characteristics, have traveled all throughout the world. All the figs that I'm mentioning to you in this video have for some reason or, or another have traveled throughout the world and have pro proliferated themselves in those locations. And then when people have grown them in those locations for so long, um, they have slowly adapted. Just like any fruit tree or vegetable variety. Um, if you grow it outside long enough and in, in the same location for years, they slowly adapt, kind of like an heirloom, right? It becomes like an heirloom tomato in a way, right? You keep saving the seed year after year, but instead, instead of saving seed, these trees are slowly adapting to the climate, right? They're slowly taking in their environment and the plant is reacting in an evolutionary way. 
And these can happen slowly or very quickly. So I think in the, the case of Hardy Chicago is that this particular fig, as well as a lot of these other figs, were very popular wherever they were grown. They realized that they had really great genetic traits and decided to spread them throughout the world. And Hardy Chicago, I think, is the best example because it's so hardy. It's such a great fig. It's really unlikely that you won't like Hardy Chicago. If you like figs at all, I think there's a good shot that you will like Hardy Chicago. I don't know anyone that doesn't like it. So I think it's very likely that there was a, an original Hardy Chicago that went by what name? I have no idea. That originated somewhere in Europe. And then it got really propagated quite frequently and was in a very high traffic area an area with a lot of trade and it made its way all throughout the world this is what people did they when they traveled they brought cuttings with them they planted fig trees this is their source of food right people brought seeds with them people brought food with them you know this was a very common thing and I think it is very likely that because it's so hardy it would it, it's just withstands so much that this variety would be a great candidate to spread across the world um, now I also have another theory now these are theories of course right I have no way of proving this but I, I strongly believe in what I just said but another theory of mine is that I think certain figs when you breed them from seed perhaps from the same capra fig um, maybe there is certain capra figs in certain areas and that's the parentage that you see quite frequently I don't know maybe those capra figs have well it doesn't make too much sense but for whatever reason I don't I can't really come up with the answer but it seems like when you breed figs that if I were to get a whole bunch of fig seeds that were pollinated and plant those out and I were to grow those out and let them fruit I would get a very similar type of fig I think I mean it's it's quite random right that's what you would think um, you know you have a one in a million shot to produce X fig you know what I mean like you have a one in hundred thousand or whatever it is shot to produce certain characteristic in a particular fig you know what I mean like that's what breeders do they have so many seedlings to try to get certain traits and I think that for whatever reason these figs reproduce themselves into certain types of figs I think a really good one is the Adriatic types that we're gonna go over in just a moment um, I also think the Atriano types is another really common one that when breeders breed figs they kind of end up in a similar category as these and they end up in a similar category as these. I again, I don't know why that is, but that's my thought process is that not all of these have been adapted and spread throughout the world is that some of them have just been propagated from seed and they just created more often than others. I, I don't know. I really I can't ex I can't exactly explain it, but Hopefully you guys get the picture now on that not all of these are, are synonyms. A lot of these are adaptations. They're very slightly different. Some of them, the differences are more obvious than others depending on probably how long they were grown in a particular location. You may even see an adaptation that even changes the taste slightly, the interior color of the fig, the texture of the fig. You know, even any characteristic like ripening period, whether or not you know it um, it's resistant to rain or not all kinds of interesting little characteristics that even though there I have named I've listed out 60 different hardy Chicago types I have found different subcategories within these figs one a great example is the Malta black types and the Malta black types within the hardy Chicago grouping is that um, they actually produce honey throughout the fig a lot of times at the eye they're a much sweeter hardy chicago 
um, I find that the texture is different um, and because they're sweeter I find them to be better hardy Chicago types so you know it's just a it's a real mystery that we probably will never know and we're gonna be Egyptologists at some point trying to figure this crap out really never knowing the answer but you know th that is my educated guess of, of researching figs for years now um, and I can tell you that every fig on this list will taste very very similar to each other the same thing with every fig in this list you know the same thing with every fig in this list and this list and this list it goes on and on right they taste very very similar but are they the same not all of them okay you understand what I'm trying to say here all right hopefully you guys got it at this point okay so this is hard of Chicago we went over that here's white Marseille aka Italian honey um, Laterula is probably a different fig, but it's very similar. You know, you can really get intricate with these names, but let's just call this the White Marseille Italian Honey category here of figs. This, these types of figs are either green on the outside or yellow on the outside. But the key characteristic here is this whitish yellow pulp. Um, you'll see the seeds very apparently they have brown seeds see these little brown seeds this is a very good characteristic of this variety for you will be able to, being able to identify it you can very easily see the acnes they're white combined with an amber pulp that will eventually turn amber it starts out white then goes to amber but I think the seeds are a dead giveaway they have these brown seeds in the center uh, let's do Violette de Bordeaux next. There's so many Violette de Bordeaux types. Um, I have a list of them here, as you can see. Um, Violette de Bordeaux is really difficult to identify by the leaf because there's three different leaf patterns, depending on the vigor. And this is something that will fluctuate quite frequently in a lot of fig varieties, is that the leaf pattern will change. Most fig varieties only have two leaf patterns. Some will only have one, very few will only have one, and some will only have will only, will have three different leaf patterns. Violet de Bordeaux is one of those that has three different leaf patterns. Uh, I think Raspberry Latte also has three different leaf patterns. Um, I'm trying to think what other fig off the top of my head does, but most of them will have two you know the large majority of them will have two and very rare will they only have one but uh that's why we're not going to identify violet de bordeaux by its leaf but it needs to be in aid right you need to know all three of the leaf patterns and then you need to be able to look at this fig and be able to uh, accurately identify it okay um, I think I also have another, here we go. So I have some other Villette de Bordeaux photos here. This is a really great photo of Villette de Bordeaux. See this redness here that gets on the stem. It also can get on the neck and kind of on the side of the fig. Um, usually jet black. Um, the interior pulp is quite red, similar to a Hardy Chicago. You can see a lot of the seeds there that are yellow. Um, when properly ripened, you'll see some honey here that looks quite juicy or looks syrupy. Um, it has a closed eye. It's usually an elongated fig with a semi-decently long stem here. Um, the stem is a nice little characteristic for identifying this, but this is very typical. And here's a great example. Look at this fig. This is Violet de Bordeaux. But it doesn't look anything like this. Why is that? Because this is the Breva of Violet de Bordeaux. How do I know that? Because look at the purpleness, the purple staining here on the outside, the pith. This purple staining um, happens for a couple reasons, most of which we're not entirely sure of. But usually this is a very strong characteristic of Breva. You'll see this a lot in Brevas. 
Here's a really great picture of a Villette de Bordeaux. This is classic. And remember the interior pattern. I think that really helps. But yeah, you can see that this got the, the speckles. We have the red on the neck. We have the red on the stem. Very, very good indicators. Here is the South Corleone fig. Uh, the real name for this, I believe, we actually know. Some of these we don't know the real name, right? Hardy Chicago. We don't know the original name for Hardy Chicago. Sal's Corleone, the original name for that is Columbaro Nero. It's an Italian variety that has actually spread its way all throughout Italy in many different provinces there. It's very common in the United States because it was probably the second most popular fig that was brought over from Italian immigrants um, back during the Great Depression years. Or maybe before that. I don't know when they immigrated. Whatever. Point is, um, this one's really common, and this is a great photo right here. If it will focus, it will not. Okay. Here's another great photo. Now, this one's a bit underripe, but you can see here how this pattern occurs with the interior here. This is a really standard, great pattern to look at for this type of fig. If you see this pattern, it's got this uh, it's got this void here, and it comes in in this little shape. I mean, this is textbook Columbaro Nero for sure. It's a big fig. You can see here's one that's really ripe, and a lot of that pith has not really showing. A lot of the flesh has gone into the pith now, but you can still see the void. It has quite an open eye. It splits a lot at the eye. This is a very flat fig. And a lot of times when you see pictures of it, you'll see the stem completely missing. Because when a lot of people pick this fig, it's very difficult to get the stem with the fig. Because the stem is very, very small. And it's very close to the branch of the fig. And when you have a stem like this one here that's very close and very small to the branch, it's very difficult to pull it off because the fig's so big, but you got to get behind the fig and pull off this really small stem. And a lot of people just yank it off, and instead they rip off the, uh, the fig without the stem. So it's very common to see photos of this fig that are missing the stem. Um, it's flat, like I said. You can see it has almost no neck. It'll start out a brownish color like this and turn red, and then it turns black, almost purple. And that's what really confused a lot of people for a while is that they thought back in the day, you know, five, seven years ago, that there was a red version and a black version. That's not true. They're all black. It's just that the red ones were picked very early. You can see here's another one that's quite red. And this one here, look, missing the stem. But this one is a Breva, and how do I know that? Well, um, the Breva has a different shape. The Bravas are actually larger, um, a little bit more elongated like this in the neck. Um, this variety produces a great Breva. Look at the eye. Look how open the eye is. It usually gets this star pattern here, cracking at the eye. Um, this is so typical. It has the ribs here. See these ribs? Super, super typical of this variety to get those ribs. To even get the cracks in the side here as it ripens. This is the perfect leaf pattern of Columbaro Nero as well. It's a very similar texture and feel and matte look to it as Hardy Chicago. See how rough this is? See how sandpaper like this uh, this leaf is, but it doesn't have it. It looks real close, guys. Look how close that leaf looks to this. It's pretty close, but again, this is more broad, less rigidness here uh, in the uh, in the main lobe there, that frontal lobe. Um, let's move on. Kathleen's black here is a what I like to call a black mission type and if I type in black mission this is what I'll, I'll get um, they're all they're found all throughout the United States it's one of the most 
common figs in the United States. It goes by many names that people have named in the fig community foolishly. It also originates in Europe, so it's found all throughout Europe. It has great commercial potential. And because of that, it has been proliferated all over Europe and all over the United States. Very typical look to Black Mission is this right here. This is like textbook. Um, it has an elongated shape. It doesn't look very jammy in the interior. It looks kind of juicy, kind of wet. The Akinis are very prominent. You can see these little white things here. These are the Akinis. The eye is usually quite closed. It handles moisture really well. Um, the neck can sometimes be elongated, sometimes it's not. It has a Braba. The Braba looks totally different from the main crop. Here's one that looks a, a lot more ripe. It gets a darker red interior to it. Um, you can see this one has a bit of a neck to it. And some of them, there's also a void here. See how there's a void? Oops. Some of them will have a void. Um, what is very characteristic, and I think the most important characteristic of a Black Mission type, is this cracking in the skin. This vertical, large fissures in the skin is extremely characteristic of a Black Mission type. You'll see this time and time again on a fig that's well ripened you know it's just very look here's the cracking here maybe not as prominent so I think that one's really easily uh, identifiable the neck also depending on the climate you're growing it in uh, will have this red neck to it almost green almost yellow neck that goes down from yellow, green, yellow, orange, red, purple into black. This is very, very common on the neck. Um, a lot of times the stem length is very short as well. It doesn't have a long stem. As you can see, the stem is very short, but the neck is not, which makes it very easy to pick. A great commercial trait now here's Celeste and I was looking at this before I started this video here all these figs and I'm not even sure if any of these figs are Celeste other than this one here this one's definitely a Celeste see the ribbing here there's also improved Celeste that people have hybridized over the years LSU have hybridized some of them created improved Celestes. Uh, there's many Celeste heirlooms that have adapted to the climate over the years. I mean, the list goes on and on. Usually it's a very small fig, teardrop shaped, brown skin, and pink interior. Now, if the skin color changes from pink, I'm sorry, if the skin color changes from brown to black, or brown to blue, or brown to purple, that's probably not Celeste. Unless, of course, you grow that fig in a really warm climate. Um, now, as an example here, the reason why I didn't think most of these figs were Celeste was because if you look at this one here, look, this the skin of this one is actually purple, almost blue. We have a nice void here. This is actually blue Celeste. This is a different... Celeste heirloom that people often confuse with Celeste. See this fig here? This is not Celeste specialty produce. You are dead wrong. It's a very small fig. It's not flat. It has a long neck. This is the complete opposite of what Celeste is. It often has this void here, right? A lot of times it'll have a long stem. Um, this one here looks a lot more like to me like a blue Celeste see how it's getting this dark purple uh, exterior to it here's another blue Celeste see how dark this one gets see how there's different ridges now 
in the leaf here, kind of like Hardy Chicago was, this is how you differentiate Celeste from Blue Celeste. Um, yeah. This fig here, oh, look at that. Okay, they have them right. Alma, Celeste, LSU Purple. And this fig here is a southern brown turkey. There are many types of brown turkey that we've talked about actually in the past, but. All right, so let's move on from that. We did Violette de Bordeaux. Here's California brown turkey. Huge, it's a big fig, guys. Huge void in the center. Big eye. Prone to rot. Prone to spoiling. Prone to insect damage. Um, it's a big fig, like I said, usually elongated with a brown skin that will turn from this lighter yellow color to red to, to black if you let it ripen. See these figs picked right here? These are uh, picked way too early. And that's why they have this abnormal yellow color in it. It should be fully black. This fig here is photoshopped. I've never seen a fig look green like this. It doesn't exist. The interior is nice, right? That's that's right. See how the interior has the void? It's got that the same pattern that we're looking for here. This here is Black Mission for sure. Anyway, this is really characteristic, I'd say, of this particular. You can see the what looks like ribs, but they're not. It's kind of just the, um, well, maybe they are ribs. Yeah, there's a, a lot of ribbing in the skin. See these lines that come down here? That's the ribbing. Now, there's English brown turkey as well. This one's found very commonly in Europe. It's usually a brown fig as well. And these, all these brown figs get so mixed up that they had no idea that they were different. And they all just named them brown turkey. But here's a really great picture of an English brown turkey type. It's got that void here, the brown skin, the ribbing. Um, this also produces a Braba. That's usually quite elongated in shape, if I'm remembering correctly. Here's what uh, a Braba would look like. See how it has a long neck to it. Whereas the main crop is more flat. Definitely still elongated, but um, you kind of get the picture here. Now, all of these figs here are actually California brown turkey. And look at, look at the difference. Unripe, unripe still unripe but look it goes from light to dark light to dark here's a great english brown turkey look at this longer neck we have the leaf pattern here that looks uh perfect we have the void in the center this is a really nice pattern to recognize here It has a similar interior pattern to uh, Columbaro Nero and how we recognize the pattern um, like this. It has a similar pattern like that. All right, now we got Dalmaty. This is a really easy one because it's a really elongated, large green fig with a dark red interior. This is very, very easy to identify. The leaf pattern has these long fingers to it. Look how different this leaf pattern is. Very few figs have this long leaf pattern. Dalmaty, Long de Duke, and Brunswick. We're gonna get to those in just a second. You can also see that there's a large void, usually pooled with honey, dark red interior. There's only one Dalmaty that goes by many names though. Here we have Brunswick again long finger leaves see that this is a pear-shaped fig that a lot of people will look at it and say wow that looks like a pear it really does it's brown on the outside 
has a void on the inside here kind of light brown pinkish color on the interior not very good in a lot of uh, humid climates much better in drier climates it's elongated looks like a pear what else can I tell you about this variety easily recognizable by the leaf pattern a lot of times I've seen a, a darker colored eye see that eye This fig, for whatever reason, just absor absorbs moisture. Really not good in humid climates. Here's long to do. And uh, look at how long the Brabas get. The Brabas have a different shape completely than a lot of the main crop on a lot of different varieties. Look, here's a damn, whatever this is. What is this, an eggplant or something? This variety, I believe, is called eggplant in Italy. Um, but in France, it's called long to do, long August. And here's a great leaf pattern. Look at that. Exactly like the other ones. With the f all these long fingers to it. Now, here's some main crop down here very typical usually has a pretty decently long stem elongated minimal to no void in the center very minimal void and it has this this pattern to the interior usually dark red as it gets riper the fig doesn't really get much darker than this uh, even in warm climates in italy all over the world i've seen this fig start out green get to like a tan brownish color and that's about it this is really typical this color here now we got black Madeira this is a really good one to know because there's a lot of black Madeira types out there that um, a lot of people are kind of uh, saying this is black Madeira or it's an improved black Madeira and trying to pass it off and make money that way um, I don't know who those people exactly are, but I'm sure there's some of them out there that are doing that. Here's a really great picture, actually, from Just Fruits and Exotics. Um, we have a single lobe, single lobe leaf here, um, and sometimes they'll have a three lobe leaf. That's very characteristic of a Black Madeira type. I've seen other figs that look just like Black Madeira, but have five lobes to them. So uh, you never know. You never know what could happen with these things. I'm sure they're different, slightly different genetically. Um, I'm sure there's maybe slight adaptations of each other. Here's another great leaf pattern. Black Madeira is a flat fig. Uh, here's my photo right here. Usually there's honey pulled at the eye. You can clearly see the neck. Even though it's flat, it has a neck. Another great photo. A void in the center. But definitely one of the best figs that exists. See the neck? It's very flat and round in shape other than the neck. It splits quite often. The eye is, uh, can be closed but also can be open. Man, I'm getting hungry just looking at Black Madeira right now. Here's Brojoto Nero or Borgesot Noir. Very similar fig in appearance to Black Madeira, but it's more flat. It's more um, oval shaped, I should say. Uh, it really gets fat on the outside edges of it. And I think there's less of a neck. It's more of a squatty shape to it. Similar in appearance. It has the honey at the eye usually an open eye uh, it has these ribbing to it it's black usually similar color to black Madeira but the leaf pattern is quite different and that's a really good way to differentiate them is to look at the leaf pattern unfortunately I can't find many photos by doing a, a Google search of this fig for whatever reason um, here's one of the most common 
figs that's out there and I think this one for whatever reason when it is when figs breed and new seedlings emerge this is a common one that comes up and I don't know why I really don't but this is very typical of green Aishia it's usually a dark red interior green skin it has a nice neck to it um, a lot of people detach it from the tree improperly and don't take the stem with it um, this is a great leaf pattern here to look to look for F usually five lobes um, this here is perfect textbook example dark red interior honey that pools on the inside I don't really know what else to say it's very easily identifiable I think this one check out this fig this one looks dehydrated wow that looks great look at the brave on this see how elongated the neck is happens quite frequently with bravas but that's what you're looking for Believe it or not, a lot of the figs I just looked down at are not green Aishia. So even if you do a Google search for this kind of thing, it doesn't mean you're going to come up with the fig that you're actually looking for. I know that really stinks, but go on the fig forum, any of the fig forums, and search for that fig, and you'll get pretty accurate photos of it. Uh, let's do Lynnhurst White, Atriano, White Triana. Canadria. I think this is a similar fig to Green Aishia in that for whatever reason when figs are bred this is a common one that comes up. I don't know. But you find this style of fig all throughout the world. Um, it's very popular. It has great commercial ability. Usually these have pretty thick skins to them. Good moisture resistance. They don't split very often. Maybe that's what happened. They all came from the same one the exception of Canadria that was bred and then they have proliferated just like Hardy Chicago and adapted I don't know but uh, they're all quite similar in flavor a lot of them have different um, textures to them they can definitely have different flavors I think more than other categories that I've lumped up together but this is pretty accurate uh, usually it goes from a an amber interior to pink to a red and some of them even get dark red like my white Triana um, and the darker the red the more berry it'll have the more berry intensity it'll have this is pretty accurate you know uh, usually it has a green skin some of them like Canadria get a a yellow skin some of them get will get sugar spots on them you know uh, it's pretty typical usually elongated in shape a larger fig um, this is a great example here um, a lot of them don't have a long stem some do you know I know Canadria does but this is a very popular fig because it's very hardy as well it holds up in a lot of climates and Dotato, this is another one that uh, is like Hardy Chicago. It is like so great commercially. Well, I guess it's, that's it's not like Hardy Chicago in that way. Maybe more like Black Mission. Um, this fig, I believe, originated in Italy and has made its way all throughout Europe. And if you go to Italy and you find Dotato, and you find numerous Dotato trees, they'll all be different. Um, the original Dotato because it was so popular it spread all throughout Italy but because it spread throughout all Italy it, it, it adapted and it, now there's all these minor differences this is a really great example here that Ben has uh, shared a photo of I'm not sure if this is his photo I don't think it is his photo but here's banana vanilla Kadota from Home Depot Kadota from Lowe's white Texas Everbearing. These are all the same as the Tato, but again, have minor 
differences in adaptation. You can definitely see that these are not the same fig, but they're very close and they probably taste very similar. So that I think concludes this one. It was a long one, guys, but hopefully you're you're with me at this point in the video. Um, you know, if you got to this point, I just recommend that you guys subscribe. If you're not at this point, uh, give this video a thumbs up and follow me on all the social media. You know, because you are um, you're a champ. All right, <laughs> you guys, this <laughs> you guys deserve all of my support at this point. So. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow for tomorrow's video. Take care.